Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat in which we would look at CPA questions that deal with the revenue cycle. This topic is covered in an auditing course as well as the auditing CPA exam. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn. If you haven't done so, YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,700 plus accounting, auditing, tax, finance, as well as Excel tutorial. If you like my lectures, please like them, share them, subscribe to the channel, if they benefit you, it means they might benefit other people. Share the wealth, connect with me on Instagram. On my website, farhatlectures.com, you will find additional resources to supplement your accounting education. For example, if you are taking an auditing course, I do have a full auditing course on my website. If you are studying for your audit CPA exam, I do have a section for the auditing CPA exam. If you are serious about passing your exam, if you want to put those 10 to 15 additional C points on your CPA exam, I strongly suggest you check out my website and this is my auditing course. Let's start with looking at some questions just to kind of get familiar with this process. Once again, if you need more additional uh, explanation about any particular topic, I strongly suggest you visit farhadlectures.com. Which of the following involve a theft of receivable followed by a delay in the posting of credits to a specific customer account? Is it kiting or, or is it lapping or is it both? Or is it neither? So simply put, do you know the definition of kiting? Do you know the definition of lapping? If you do, you'll be able to answer this question. So basically, this is a definitional questions part of the revenue cycle when you're auditing the revenue cycle. And simply put, when you steal money from an account receivable by delaying the posting uh, of crediting to a specific customer, the process is called lapping. What is lapping? Simply put, you received, let's assume, um, you received $5,000 for a particular day. And those $5,000 are supposed to go into account number A, B, C, and D. And E, let's make it E. And also, just to make this simple, each customer, they paid $1,000. So each customer will have $1,000. So you're supposed to post those that $5,000 to each account separately. So what you do, you post for A, B, C, and D, and you pocket this $1,000. So A, B, C, and D, their account, their account is updated, and you pocketed this $1,000, you, you know, you just, you, you use it for your own personal use. Now, the following day, or a day or two later, you would receive another $5,000. Now, those $5,000 is for F, G, H, you guys get the points. What you do with this new $5,000, you'll pay E and you will keep one customer unpaid. And the process repeats itself. So this is what lapping is. It's the stealing of a receivable followed by a delay in the posting of credits to a specific customer. Now, how can a company um, eliminate this, uh, eliminate this uh, type of fraud, eliminate lapping? Basically, what you need to do, the person that Receive that 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 post to the account should not also deposit the money, so so we have a segregation of duties. Depositing the check and crediting the account should be two separate people. This way, you can do it. You cannot keep your money for your keep your money for yourself. Okay. Kiting is what is kiting? Kiting is when you make the money appear in two different bank accounts at the same time. And I do have a recording about kiting, but the definition the definition that you are being asked about is B lapping. And I talk about lapping in my auditing course as well. Let's take a look at this revenue cycle. Which of the following department prepares the sales order and approve the customer customer for credit? Okay. So which department prepared the sales order? Well, it's the sales department. So immediately you could eliminate A and B because it's the sales department, the sales department. Which department authorize the credit so which department says yes it's okay we can sell to this customer they have a good credit well for one thing if you're down to 50 50 the same and the, the same department should not do both so you could el immediately eliminate d and keep c but you have to understand why c the, pe the people in the sales department they might have every incentive to approve the to approve the sale why because their performance their performance could be posted, uh, sorry, sorry, their performance could be based on sales. So they have every incentive to approve every sale. Therefore, you don't let them approve the sales because that's basically kind of a violation of segregation of duties. You would have a credit department that's separate 
to to authorize the credit think about one i'm sure some of you experience this when you go to the mall well not these days with the COVID 19 but when you when we used to go to the mall what happened is they'll say oh why don't you open a credit card and you'll be able to we'll get we'll get you 10 percent off so what they do when you open the credit card the person that's selling you that that's making the sale doesn't open the credit card for you usually they have to call an 800 number or they ask you to go on a computer and input the information simply put the sales department that per, the person that's making the sale cannot also approve your credit a credit department will have to approve whether we should sell you on credit or not therefore the answer is c as in charlie c as in charlie let's look at this question within the proper segregation of duties for the revenue cycle again we're talking about the revenue cycle which of the following department represent an example of custody so you have to be familiar with the revenue cycle which department are involved and simply put here, they're asking us which department is considered custody. Custody means they hold the asset. Now, without knowing anything, you might be able to answer this question. So who holds the product, custody of the product? Well, well, what can we do immediately? If you're looking at A, B, C, D, if you know anything about the revenue cycle or the purchasing cycle, you could eliminate C. Why? Because the receiving department is part of the purchasing cycle which i also cover and i might you know do a session about the purchasing cycle so immediately you could take out c the receiving the receiving room is part of the purchasing department so it's not part of the revenue cycle you could also take out b and hopefully you know why billing is accounting so it's not part of custody and remember accounting if it's an if billing is accounting accounting cannot have custody remember those two things they have to be separate accounting and custody they cannot be combined if you if you have access to the record which is you have access to the accounting record you have access to billing you should not have custody of the asset so b is a no-no well think about it now you're down to 50 50. if you want to take a guess which one is the custody is it the shipping or is it the warehouse who holds the asset the warehouse holds the asset so what's the so but the shipping also get get their hands on the asset because they ship it yes shipping they execute the order shipping also they work as a, as a reconciliation process what do i mean by reconciliation process remember the shipping department they're going to be receiving two different things they're going to be receiving a sales order they're going to be receiving a sales order from the credit department from the credit department remember the credit department approve the sales order they're going to be receiving a sales order from the credit department but also what they would also receive they would receive a sales order from the warehouse also the warehouse sales order from the warehouse why because the warehouse my pen is acting up because the warehouse kind of transferred the goods to them to the shipping people with a sales order from the warehouse and they basically they match those two say they reconcile then they ship it then they prepare the shipping document so that's why it's a an execution and reconciliation not custody custody is with warehouse department and hopefully by just using your common sense you should be able to kind of you should be able to kind of well think custody the warehouse the warehouse have custody of the product let's take a look at this question an auditor begins with with a sample of bills of lading and trace forward into the accounting record if no if a sales invoice was not found for a particular shipment the auditor could suspect that goods were shipped out fraudulently on consignment one both neither so on and so forth so first of all do we know what bills of lading is bills of lading is basically the carrier uh, like for example let's assume you drive a delivery truck and you that's all you ship product from one company to another so what happens is when they give you the product you, you just have to prepare that bill of lading tell them you know you know who's the shipper who's the consignee what are you shipping from what's the destination and what what are you carrying basically so if the auditor starts with this document then trace forward into the accounting record what do you expect to find if you have if the company shipped something you expect to find a sales order but here we assume is you you've you looked at the bills of lading and there's no sales order there's no sales order that's what we're assuming what could you suspect well you could suspect fraudulent uh, shipped out fraudulently sure somebody could be stealing stealing from the company there's no sales why did we ship it who, who are we shipping it to so a is correct so one will still one would survive two will be out d will be out now all we have to know all we have to know is is two correct 
it could be goods on consignment. That's also correct. If we're shipping something, goods on consignment, it could be both A and B. And always for goods on consignment, I give this example, PepsiCo. PepsiCo. Pepsi. And Walmart. So what happened is Pepsi, they ship goods to Walmart. They ship goods to Walmart. And when they ship goods to Walmart, they don't really sell it. All what they do is they ask Walmart to place the product on their shelves until Walmart sells it. So if you go to a Pepsi warehouse and you see that they shipped something, they shipped, you know, 500 units, 500 uh, bottles. Well, but you don't see a sales order because they were shipped to Walmart. Their goods on consignment. We can we cannot record. It's, there is no sales order until Walmart sells them. Then we record the sale. So it could be both. It could be either fraudulent, not both. It could be either fraudulently, this the shipment is fraudulent, or it could be that we ship it goods on consignment to a third party, to a second party or third party for the com company for sale. Could be either or. As always, I would like to remind you to visit my website if you have any concern about these topics and visit my auditing course where I cover the revenue cycle in depth as well as other accounting topics. One subscription gives you access to all my, I believe, 15 different module or 20 different module and material and courses, especially if you're studying for your CPA exam. You can add 10 to 15 points. Good luck. Study hard and stay safe during those coronavirus days.